I think it, a lot of people don't know that Pendleton is the fastest growing part of the county. And one of the things that's leading that is housing. How many houses are going up in Pendleton now and around the Pendleton area? Well, we've experienced a lot of growth, as you have seen over the past several years. However, um, it's slowing up some now. I mean, uh, you know, I think with the interest rates going up a little bit, uh, we're starting to see it slow down a little. So I don't think it's going to go as fast as it was. But, um, you know, if we, we probably, if, if all the rest of them built out that are planned right now, it, it might be somewhere in the neighborhood of 650 houses. Um, so I don't know how long that build out will take at this point, but there still seems to be a reasonable amount of demand. Demand is just not going really wide open like it was. But yeah. even even so, it's historic highs for Pendleton. <laughs> See this number of houses going up. Yeah, historic highs, but our population uh, hadn't increased really as much as you would think. Um, you know, there, it, when you see all this growth, a lot of the growth is around us too, not necessarily in the city limits. So you got to keep that in mind. And of course, you see everybody, I think, seeing the increase in traffic, congestion, and things like that as a result of all the growth, but all the growth's not here. Um, although we are seeing a lot of growth, and of course, we've had a, a, a lot of growth just in our business community too, you know, downtown with new restaurants. And, and things like that too. So overall, we're still growing, but not quite at the rate we were. And I think uh, the, uh, the plans now are to really open up a whole another district with a new fire station and there'll be a lot of residential out there too, right? Right, yeah, this is an area in town here that is was called Village Hills and it's off of uh, Cherry Street over here. If you can come into it that direction and, and, and also you can go out Queen and turn on Calhoun and, and go in that way. So it's in between Queen Street and Cherry Street here. But it was kind of a blighted area over there and the infrastructure is real bad. A lot of problems with the roads and the water and sewer and a lot of things. And the housing there was mostly mobile homes. And uh, those, the ones that haven't been just pulled out of there completely are not in good condition. Uh, so there's a lot, of, a lot of things that need to be improved over there. Uh, so what we're doing is we're establishing what is called a TIF district, and it's just an acronym for tax increment financing. So what will happen is we'll issue bonds, and council is in deliberation, or will be in the next few weeks, of just how, how much to, uh, to come up with first as far as a bond, as far as how much that first bond issue will be. Um, because what we'll need to get done is get started over there and we'll go in and fix the infrastructure, bring it up snuff, fix the roads, and then we'll have a developer come in that will be building new houses over there. And uh, so, of course, you, you know, the first thing in your mind, you're going to say, well, how are you paying for those bonds? Well, the bonds are paid by the tax revenue that is generated from those houses. So, uh, you know, you might say, well, you know, we're losing that tax money. Well, you're not really because it wasn't there to start with. And that whole big area over there, all of it generated about $9,000 a year for the town. So there wasn't a lot of revenue coming in from it anyway. Um, so having said all of that, um, another thing about it is that we would be able to use the tax revenue of ours to pay the bonds and also the tax revenue of the counties and of the school district. So it's a good deal and it's a good deal for them too, you know, because ultimately, as soon as that's paid off, then the school district's getting more money, the county's getting more money, we're getting more money and we've brought that whole area up to a lot higher standard and it's, it's going to improve the, the looks of it and it's going to hopefully provide some more housing and, and maybe some more affordable housing for people as well. So it's all a, a good win. There's, a, there's going to be another subdivision going in next to it, which is part of that TIFT, and it was going on the Morton Farm property, which is the way it's mostly referred to that you probably heard about because it was a little bit controversial as far as 
uh, when the, they were trying to decide what you know they wanted there. But that's going to be higher end housing there. But it'll contribute to that as well, which is a good thing. Since the last time we talked, uh, Range on Main is open with their upper thing. Um, let's talk about downtown. Uh, looks like Range on Main is packed all the time now. Yeah. Yeah, they're doing quite well, and so's Blue Heron. You know, they came over here from Clemson. They're doing uh, really well. And rains, yeah, I think uh, the warmer it gets, like it has been the last couple of days, you're going to see more and more people want to get on the upper deck up there, whatever you want to call it, to eat because it's nice sitting out there, nice view and view of the park or the, the square and all, and uh, the mountains off in the distance. It's uh, I like sitting outdoors. I think a lot of people do. But yeah, they're doing well, and uh, so are all our other businesses up there. They appear to be doing really well as, as, as well also. Is parking still a big challenge for downtown? Parking's still a challenge. You know, we're doing everything we can right now, and uh, we're going in, and what we're trying to do to start with is we're trying to um, strike the parking spaces that are available in town um, and and improve the lighting around all those areas because the the at the end of the day you're going to have to walk a little bit to get where you're going in town here. Um, I know everybody always likes to park in the front door of a place but it's just not possible always. So the reason we're improving the lighting too is just want people to feel safe when they're walking a block or two to their car because uh, if you come in there on a Thursday, Friday, Saturday night when it's really busy there's a good chance you might have to walk a, a, a block or two to, to get to your where your destination, wherever you want to go in, in, the, in the downtown. But um, we also are purchasing a parking lot, which is directly behind one of the businesses, right in the central business there. And uh, that should be happening in the next few weeks. Uh, we're just getting the agreement together and then we'll uh, we'll have that and we'll have, we're going to go in and repave that lot and so on and uh, bring it up to snuff so that's going to help. We've got another little lot across the square from it over there that'll add some more spaces as well. And we're doing some other things up there. We're putting in some more four-way stops um, to slow traffic down a little bit just to continue to make it more pedestrian friendly. We've done a lot of things to, to make it pedestrian friendly. We've uh, upgraded our crosswalks. You may have seen the signage on the crosswalks up there. We've, uh, we're even going to put in some LED lighting that's solar powered in some of the crosswalks just to bring attention to pedestrians so that uh, they feel safe walking across the streets. Um, so we're making a lot of thing, improvements like that. Uh, eventually we're, we're going to narrow the traffic lanes and just try to keep everybody slowed down a little bit coming through the downtown because uh, you know we don't want anybody to get hurt, get injured. So we have a lot of pedestrian traffic now. And as part of that, y'all been extending downtown with landscaping and sidewalk and how's, where's the progress on that? Where are we on that? Well, first thing we did, we went in and uh, cleaned all the sidewalks a lot and uh, edged them. And, uh, you know, over time, things grow onto the sidewalk, even, you know, from private property owners, they'll have shrubbery and things like that that'll grow out and kind of take the sidewalk over. So we've been doing that. And uh, you know, every everywhere we have new subdivisions, we're we're requiring sidewalks, and we're just trying to make sure that people have a way to walk, so that we have good walkability and connectivity in the town. We have also a project on 76 over there where we're going to be realigning Westinghouse Road with Swaney, which is across the road there, and we'll straighten that intersection up to be traffic traffic light there and we hope to have a crosswalk going across 76 too so that people can feel more connected on either side of 76. And we're also realigning uh, Boscobelle Road with Dalton Road which comes out of the new subdivisions over there on 187 and 76. So uh, that'll make that run a little smoother too we hope. Pushing dirt around and looking at some stuff. Uh... But the other projects people will be able to walk to new housing, the mill project down there. What's the latest you've heard on the mill project they're working on? Well, they're getting ready to go on it now. You know, it takes a long time to do those kind of projects because you have to check all the boxes with uh, DHEC and EPA and things like that and remove hazardous material and so on and so forth. And uh, that's been a process, but it's getting ready to go now. So we'll see that shaping up too. And, um, you know, there'll be some new infrastructure improvements there as far as repaving the roads and things like that. 
So that's going to change the way that looks too. And that's going to be a nice thing there. And it's, it's in a good spot. It's going to be walkable to the downtown and all. So that's going to be a great place for those people who choose to live over there, I think. And they're trying to preserve the look and as many of the buildings as they can, the old Cheney Mill site we're talking about. So it'll be unique rather than just another brand new development. They're trying oh, yeah. to keep it look like the old brick. And right. And that's the thing about the downtown. You know, we we really want to try to keep the uniqueness of the downtown and uh, so that it doesn't look like just another Disney World type of downtown or something like that. And the same groups owns the oil mill property now too, right? Same group, yes, Camden. They said they were trying to move as quick as they can on it. Have, have you talked to them about that? Yeah, they're moving along. It's going about as we about as we figured. It's on schedule, I think. They've uh, just completed um, is a lot of the testing for what's above what you see above the ground. And the next step is they'll be take, getting rid of the hazardous material that's there. And then once that's completed, then you'll see those structures and the debris that's left there come out of there. And then you may see it sit for a good while. Uh, you probably just see a grassy field sitting there for a good while after that because um, it'll take a while to check the boxes off again on what's underground if, if there is anything. You know, I'm not sure exactly what's there. But um, it, it's, I don't think you'll see something pop up there overnight, so I wouldn't look for that. But it's going to get cleaned off, I think, in a, in a reasonable time frame. Well, it's so close to downtown, it'd be a nice green space, an extra green space. Downtown. Yeah, sure. Just nice. It'd be nice just to have a, have a green, grassy field over there for a while. That'd be all right, too. Any other new businesses looking at the area that you've heard? Well, you know, we've got, you'll look down there, Zaxby's is being completed. So you're going to have Zaxby's down there and Circle K, they're building it right now. You've probably seen that. Of course, we, we know there's an Ingalls coming at some point. They have property out there. Don't know what the timeline is on that. There's a few other just little rumors floating around, but nothing that I, want to, I would want to say right now is definitive that's going to go there other than those that I just mentioned. We just finished the big event, Jubilee. Yep. Uh, looked like I had really good crowds. Uh, remind people what happened this, this past weekend and what all crowds you had. Well, had a, we had a great weekend for it. It didn't look that way at first on uh, Saturday morning because we had all that rain and a little bit of lightning come through. But after about 10 o'clock, the weather uh, was really starting to improve a lot and it went off really well. So we had a great time, had a big crowd, a huge crowd, I'd say, on Sunday. Um, and uh, everything went really pretty well overall. We had a lot of vendors and uh, I think they did pretty well. And our, our businesses there, they always thrive during that event, the restaurants and every, everyone on, up there on the square. And we're moving into the rest of the spring and summer. What other events you got coming? I know you got a Mother's Day parade again. Yeah, we'll have the Mother's Day parade again. That'll be great. And we also have music on the green that'll be coming up. And um, that'll probably be going on. There'll be several of those during the summer. And I guess finally, for people who haven't visited Pillington in a while, what do they need to know? What do they need to know that they may, may have missed? <laughs> well, you know, uh, that's a hard question to answer. Um, other than the projects we have going on, uh, if they haven't been here, I would say they've missed visiting a really great place um, and a really unique place uh, with a lot of nice people. Besides just the historical character we have here and the amount of history that's here, which is a ton, you know, of history. Our plantation homes like Ashtabula and Woodburn and all the old buildings here in town. And, um, you know, Pendleton is still the, old, you know, it's the oldest town in the upstate. And uh, you could spend days here just enjoying all of the history and, and things. But besides that, there's a lot of good people here I think they would miss because the people here make the difference in Pendleton. They're all, good, you know, for the most part, they're all really great folks. And uh, there's, as we like to say, we have history, we have hospitality, and it's also home for us.